Hello everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make that beautiful, beautiful blanket there you saw in the picture. Now this is it. I just don't have a lot of room to show you. My gosh, is it ever pretty. And it is simple. So the entire thing is made with a one row repeat stitch super easy all right so you see how pretty that is we'll talk about the yarn here in just a second um and then the border is also made with a one row repeat so the main um portion of the blanket that you see is made with a tulip stitch and then the border is a double crochet herringbone border my golly my golly golly this is a beautiful blanket i might have to keep this one Generally, I donate or save for my animal auction, but this one's striking my fancy. I think I have this just the chair for it. It is absolutely uh, magnificent and stunning. Um, so it does look very similar on both sides. So, you know, here's one side. The only difference that you would be able to tell, actually, you really can't tell any difference. <laughs> the blanket is the same on both sides. How awesome is that? I just love that that uh, herringbone border. That turned out remarkable. That is such that is such a gorgeous blanket. Okay, I gotta keep it. I'm sorry. I'm gonna quit going on about it. I'm gonna tell you the size that it is and the yarn that I used. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Sometimes I just well, that, that's pretty. Okay, so uh, I I did some measurements of it. I just set it down here. But so with the border. Now that's including this big, it does have quite a, quite a wide border on it. So with the border, the blanket measures 62 wide and 72 tall. Amazingly a nice size. Now, if you were to leave off the border and you just see the main portion, like the green portion of the blanket, it would measure approximate. These are just approximate measures, uh, 52 by 62. Cause you know, everybody crochets. A little bit differently so you know it's going to be approximately that size and the border itself is approximately five inches um so you know five inches on this side five inches on the other five inches on the top and five inches on the bottom now of course you don't have to even put a border on it because you know it's beautiful the way it is but i think the border just made it outstanding and you can also make the border i talk about it later um not quite as wide if you don't want to um I do like to put wide borders sometimes on blankets and I think it really worked well for this one. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the yarn. Okay, for that blanket that you saw in the picture, it is made with uh, Caron um, Ombre, the Jumbo Roll. Um, now this is classified as a medium weight number four, 100% acrylic yarn. The color I have is Lake Mist. Of course, you do not have to use this yarn. Any four weight yarn will work. Actually, any yarn that you want to use will work because I will give you the stitch multiple and you can make your blanket as big as you'd like. Now, there are uh, 544 meters or 595 yards per ball. Um, and to make the blanket the size that I mentioned, um, you're going to need three balls of this or approximately 1,645 meters or 1,800 yards. And then for the border, which you see that herringbone border, it's made with Red Heart Super Saver, which is also a medium weight number four, 100% acrylic yarn. The color that was used for that blanket is called a buff. And to do the herringbone border, the size that, you know, the thickness and everything uh, for the blanket that you see in the picture, you're going to need 732 meters or approximately 800 yards of this. And remember, you don't have to use this yarn either. Any four weight yarn will work. And then going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. All right, for the, I'm going to show you with a different yarn on a smaller scale. Now for the main uh, portion of the blanket that's made with the ombre yarn, it is made with the tulip stitch. Now the tulip stitch 
is done in a multiple of four plus two in case you want to make your blanket bigger or smaller. Um, following along with me, you want to start out with a chain of 158 stitches. So 158. Now, once you get your 158, what we're going to do is a single crochet in the second stitch from our hook. So we don't count the one that's on our hook. So here's one and two. Go into that second one and single crochet. Now we're going to work and put one single crochet in every stitch of the chain. Just like this. So row one is just one single crochet in every stitch, <clears throat> excuse me, until we make it to the end of our row. All right, once you make it to the end of row one, we'll go ahead and we'll start row two. Should have 157 stitches now at the end of row one, if you're following along with me. All right, row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch, doesn't count as anything. We're gonna go right back into this very first stitch and work, and we are going to work a single crochet into it. And then we're gonna work a chain of three. One, two, three. And we're gonna go back into the exact same stitch that we just worked that single crochet in, the very first stitch, and work three double crochets. One, two, and three. So in that first stitch, we have a single crochet, a chain three, and three doubles. Now we're gonna start the repeat of row two. We're going to skip three stitches. Skip, skip, skip. And then the next one, we're gonna single crochet. And then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. We're gonna go back into that same stitch there that we just single crocheted into, and we're gonna work three double crochets. So just like we did with the first stitch. And then we're gonna repeat it again. We're gonna skip three, skip, skip, skip. And in the next, we are going to single crochet, chain three, and then go back into the same stitch that we just single crocheted into and work three double crochets. And this is what we're gonna repeat till we get to the last four stitches of our row. One more time, we're gonna skip three, skip, 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 single crochet into the next, chain three, go back into that same stitch that we just single crocheted into, and three doubles. So I'm gonna repeat this pattern until I have four stitches that remain, and that is where I will meet back up with you. All right, so I've made it to the end of row two here and I have four stitches that remain. We're gonna go ahead and skip three and we're gonna single crochet into the very last stitch and that will end row two. Now row three is the repeat row for the entire uh, main portion of the blanket. So this stitch is just a one row repeat. So for row three, it's pretty, it's, similar to row two, we're gonna chain one and turn our work. Remember that chain one does not count as a stitch here. We're gonna work right back into this very first single crochet and we're gonna go into it and we're going to single crochet, chain three, and then go back into the same spot again and work three double crochets. There's one. two, and there's three. All right, so now we're gonna start the repeat for row three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip these three double crochets, skip, 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 and we're gonna be working in this chain space here. 
So we're going to put a single crochet into the top stitch of this chain three space. Single crochet into it. And then we're going to chain three. And then we're going to go back into the chain space. We're going to go into the chain space and work three double crochets. So we're not going back into the where we single crocheted. This time we're working through the chain space. So three double crochets just right through the space. Just like that. And that is the repeat. So again, we'll skip uh, all these stitches here until we get up here to the next chain space. Now into the top of the next chain space, we go into it and we single crochet. And then we chain three. Then we're going to come back down and work through the chain space and work three double crochets through the chain space. There's one, two, and three. Just like that. Again, we'll jump to skip all these stitches and jump to our next chain space. And in the top stitch of the chain space, we single crochet, chain three, and then back through the chain space, we work three double crochets. So very easy. Now we're just going to go ahead and repeat this pattern for row three. Here's our next chain space, single crochet into the top of the chain space. Chain three. And then we come back down and we work into the chain space, our three double crochets. So we're going to repeat this pattern until we get near the end of our row. All right, I'm coming to the end of row three. And you can see here in this chain space before the last one here, I did my single crochet, chain three, and three doubles back into the space. Now this is how we're going to end row three. We're just going to put a single crochet into the top of the last chain space. And that will end row three. And that's the row that we just keep repeating. So row four, we're just going to repeat what we did on row three. We will chain one and turn, which the chain one does not count as a stitch. Go back into the single crochet here, the first one, and single crochet, chain three, go back into the same spot and work three double crochets. Like that. And then we're going to start the repeat. We are going to come to our next chain space and single crochet into the top of the chain. Chain three, and then come back down into the chain space and work three double crochets. One, two, and three. And repeat. Come over here to our next chain space, single crochet into the top of the chain space, chain three, come back down, three doubles, into the chain space. Now we're just going to keep repeating row three until we get this as big as we want it to be. Now remember when we end row three, we end by putting a single crochet into the top of the last chain space. So I'm just going to continue repeating row three, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and the blanket you see in the picture has, a, uh, has 85 rows tall. Um, it's 85 rows but you can make yours as tall as you'd like. All right, so we get you, get you get it as big as you want it to get. And what we're gonna do now is square off the top so we can 
you know, I'm doing it like it's on a smaller scale, but we're going to square the top off here so it's not so jaggedy so we can make a nice border around it. So here's what we do to square the top off once you get it, you know, as big as you need it to be. So we're going to do a chain one and we're going to turn our work. So this would be the final row to square the top off. Now we're going to go back into the same stitch and single crochet, chain three, and go back again into the same stitch and work three doubles, just like we, you know, start every row. All right, now this is where it's going to be different to squaring off the top. So we're gonna jump to our next chain space and we're going to work a single crochet into the top of the chain space. Now into the chain space, this is where it's going to be different. We're gonna go into the chain space and we are going to work one single crochet, one half double crochet, and then one double crochet into that chain space, just like that. So that's gonna leave it uh, you know, uh, squared off at the top. So let's go ahead and do that again. So we're gonna jump to our next chain space and we're gonna single crochet into the top of the chain space. And then into the chain space, we will work a single crochet, a half double, crochet and a double crochet. And this is what we'll repeat till we get to the end. Again, we'll jump to our next chain space and into the top of the chain space, we work a single crochet. And then into the chain space, we work a single, a half double, and a double all into that chain space and as you can see it starts to square it off a bit here at the top it won't be perfect but don't worry we'll take care of, we'll take care of that when we go around the blanket so one more time we're going to jump to the next chain space here and single crochet into the top of the chain and then into the chain space it's a single a half double and a double. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this pattern until I get to the end of the row. All right, so we make it to the end here. I just worked my single half double and double down my last chain space. Well, second to the last chain space. Here's my last chain space. I'm gonna go ahead and single crochet into the top of the last chain space and that will finish that off. But do not tie off yet, do not tie off. So we got a pretty square uh, edging right now. So what we're gonna do now is what I like to call the finishing blanket edge before we add the border on. So this is gonna give us a nice clean slate to work the border on. And, it, and what it is is we're going to be doing single crochet around it. So there is no particular number of single crochets that you need um, in order to for us to work the herringbone boarding border, which is on this blanket. Um, so what we will do is chain one, and we're gonna work down the side, and we're gonna evenly space out single crochets. Now, yours, the number you have will probably be different than the number I have, because what we do is, is we try to do our best to just evenly space out single crochet stitches. doesn't have to be perfect you just you know do your best to get uh evenly spaced stitches down the side it's not always easy when you're working on the sides because it's hard to see where the stitches need to go but you just evenly space down the side until you get down here to the bottom All right, so once you make it, I can put one more in there. 
All right, once you make it to the bottom corner here, in the corners, all four corners will be the same. We are gonna work one single crochet, a chain of two, and then one more single crochet back into that same chain space. And then we're gonna start working across the bottom here, um, working one single crochet in every stitch. Should be a little bit easier to see here on the bottom where your stitches need to go. And you just work one single in every stitch until you get to the next corner. And that's where I'll meet back up with you. So I'll just continue across here working one single crochet in every stitch. And I'll meet back up with, with you over here at the corner down here. All right, so I come to the next corner here. And what I'm gonna do in that is the same. I'm gonna work a single crochet, a chain of two, go back into the same spot and single crochet. And then I will continue working up the side, evenly spacing out single crochets the best that I can. Remember, it will not be perfect. And there's no certain number that you need of single crochets. So just do the best you can to evenly space out single crochets up the side until you get to the next corner. And here I am coming up to the next corner here. Maybe. Let's see, there's this chain space. Let me go into that. All right, so right up here, the top chain space here at the corner. I'm gonna call that my corner stitch and I'm gonna work a single crochet, chain of two, and a single crochet back into the same stitch. Remember, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. You know, we're just trying to get a nice clean single crochet edge so we can work a border across. Now I'm gonna go across the top here, working one single crochet in every stitch until I get to back to where we started. Just like this. All right, so I'll meet back up with you right over here where we started. All right, so I've come to the end up here. So the last stitch is actually this single crochet here at the end. And in that, we are going to work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. And then we're gonna slip stitch into our first single crochet on the side. So this is a chain one right here. We're gonna go right here. And if you look closely, right here, not this one, but the next one, slip stitch. And that will end that. Now you can tie that yarn off. Um, and we're gonna do the herringbone border. Now, if you don't want to put that border on it, that, that's completely fine. You can leave it the way it is. I mean, it's, you know, if you went around it in uh, like a crab stitch border, that'd be nice, or another row of single crochet would straighten it out even more. Or you could do any other type of border that you'd like. But for the border that you see on the blanket that I'm using, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a different color. So this is the herringbone stitch border. So we're gonna start our yarn in any chain two space. And then we're going to chain one. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the double crochet herringbone and we're gonna put one in this chain space right here. So we're gonna yarn over, go into the chain space and we're gonna draw up a loop. Now we do not yarn over or anything. We just pull this first loop directly through the second loop that's on our hook like that. And then we're gonna yarn over and go through one loop on our hook and yarn over and go through 
two loops on our hook. So that's how the double crochet herringbone is made. And that's what we're going to do in every stitch across until we get to our next chain two space. So into the next stitch, we're going to do another herringbone. So we're going to yarn over, go into the stitch, draw up a loop. Don't yarn over, just pull that loop directly through that first loop. And then we yarn over and go through one loop and yarn over and go through the remaining two. Now this is what we're going to do, a double crochet herringbone in every stitch all the way across until we make it to our next chain two space. So again, into the next stitch, we'll do the herringbone stitch. So we're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. Do not yarn over anything. Just pull that first loop directly, th the loop on your hook directly through that first loop like that. Yarn over and go through the one loop on your hook and yarn over and go through the remaining two. Again, herringbone into the next. Yarn over, go into the stitch, draw up a loop. Pull that first loop right through the next loop on your hook. Then we yarn over and go through one loop and yarn over and go through the remaining two. So it's quite easy and the herringbone actually takes a, takes a slant. That's what makes it so unique. So you'll notice your stitches will start to slant after a while and that is completely normal. So again, another herringbone into the next stitch. Just it's very important to remember, do not yarn over, just pull that loop directly through the first loop. And then we yarn over and go through one loop and yarn over and go through the remaining two. Now I'm going to do this, like I said, in every stitch until we get to our next chain two space. And that is where I'll meet back up with you. Just like that. So you can see the stitches starting to slant and that's what we want. So I'll see you at the next chain two space. All right. So you can see these stitches slanted and I've made it to my next chain two space. So this is what we're going to do with the remaining chain two spaces until we get back to our starting point. We're going to go in and we're going to work one into the chain two space. Herringbone. And then we're going to chain two and we're going to go back into the same chain space and work another herringbone. So the corners will be a herringbone, chain two, a herringbone. Each of the corners until we get back to the beginning. So only one herringbone, chain two, one herringbone. And then we start the repeat again of putting one herringbone into every stitch until we get to our next corner. And then in the next corner, it will be the same. One herringbone, a chain two, and one herringbone. And we'll keep repeating this all the way around until we get back to our starting point. So it's pretty easy. like that and then when, like I said when I get to my chain two space one herringbone chain two one herringbone herringbone all the way across the next chain two space one herringbone chain two one herringbone herringbone all the way back to the beginning and I'll show you how we're going to end this this is actually the first row one of our border so I'll meet back up with you right here where we started all right so I'm coming to the end of row one of the herringbone border. So I've made it back to the beginning. Now remember in the beginning we only put one herringbone into that chain two, chain two space. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add one more herringbone stitch to that chain two space. Oops. 
And then we are going to end by putting a half double crochet into the top of the first herringbone. And that half double crochet is going to act like our chain two space. And this eliminates any slip stitching that we would have to do over to the chain two space to start again. So it will be a virtually seamless uh, border. And that will end row one. Now, uh, usually the herringbone is worked in a back and forth method, which would give the herringbone, um, you see how they're slanted? They would be opposite, slanted opposite each row. Now, since we're working in the round, we actually are gonna have to turn our work to get the herringbone effect. So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna start row two at a border, and row two of the border is the repeat row for um, the entire border until we do the final edge. So we're gonna chain one and turn our work to the back side. All right. Now into this chain two space, we are gonna work one herringbone into that space. Oops. Slide through. Yarn over, go through the first and then the remaining two. And then we're going to continue putting one herringbone stitch in every stitch until we get to our next chain two space. Remember, we need to turn, we had to turn our work in order to get the um, back and forth, the zigzag effect that the herringbone is so known for. So I'm just working one herringbone stitch into every stitch until I get to my next chain two space. So this is, you know, extremely, it's pretty much the same as row one, except for we're working on the back side of our work now. So I'm going to go ahead and meet back up with you at the next chain two space. So you can kind of see, you know, it might take you a couple rows, but you can see the herringbone taking effect um, as they are slanted in opposite directions, each row. Okay, I'll meet back up with you at this next chain two space. All right, I made it to my next chain two space, and this is going to be the same as the first row. We're going to go back into it, and we're going to work one herringbone. chain of two, and then one more herringbone into the same chain space. Just like that. And then we're going to continue across, putting one herringbone in every stitch until we get to our next chain two space. And in that chain two space, we will do the same. One herringbone, a chain two, and one herringbone. And we will repeat that pattern, the same as row one, except for we're just working on the back side of our work now, or we turned our work, we're working in the opposite direction, until we get back to our starting point. Just like that. Oh, it's pretty. All right, so I'm gonna go around. When I get here, herringbone, chain two herringbone, all the way back up here, herringbone, chain two herringbone, all the way back to our starting point, and I'll meet you there. All right, so I've made it to the end of round two of our border, and I'm back at my chain one space, and we're gonna end it the same way that we did in round one. So I'm gonna go back, we're back at our chain two space, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna end it the same way as I did round one. So we already have one herringbone in there. We're gonna go ahead and put another one herringbone stitch in the chain two space. And then we're gonna end by half double crocheting into the first herringbone, which acts as our chain two, which eliminates any slip stitching or seams. So that is the repeat row of the border of the herringbone. So for row three, we're just gonna chain one and turn our work. 
you just have to remember that you have to ch you have to turn your work um, every time you complete a round. Otherwise, you will not get that unique, uh, you know, zigzag effect of the herringbone stitch. And again, we're just going to, for row three, repeat what we did for row two. We'll go back into the same stitch here, this chain, chain space here. And we will work one herringbone into it. And one herringbone into every stitch. Just like we did on row two. Oops, excuse me. And so we get to our next chain two space. So, and when you get to your next chain two space, it'll be the same as the previous round. One herringbone, chain two, one herringbone, and one herringbone all the way down. Next chain two space, one herringbone, chain two, one herringbone, and so forth until we get back to the beginning. Now I'm not gonna do the big border. As you can see, the blanket has quite a wide border. And like I said, you don't have to do that many rows. You can do as many as you want. Um, and then it's, you know, you finish it out with the row of single crochet edging. And it's about a five inch border. I, I do believe, which is, you know, I think it's, I think it's pretty. Yeah, it's about a five inch border there. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, five inches. Beautiful. But remember, you make your border as wide or as thin as you like or leave your border off or do a different border if you choose all right and if you do want the herringbone uh border to be as wide as the one in the picture um we would do eight total rows of herringbone um stitches so right now i just started row three we would want to do a total of eight of course you would not have to do that many you know that would be uh completely up to you how big you want your uh border to be you don't want it as big as mine you do as many rounds as you'd like um so following along with me you finish your eight rounds and we're going to do one final finishing round on the border remember it's going to going to be a lot thicker because i'm just showing you on a smaller scale but what we'll do now is once you've chained one and turned your work we will go back into this chain two space here or the half double crochet actually <laughs> that we count as a chain two and we're going to work four single crochets into that space this is the finishing round of the border which would be round nine if you're following along with me and then we're just going to work one single crochet in every stitch until we get to our next chain two space and then when we get to our next chain two space, it will be four single crochets into the chain two space. And then we will continue around working one single crochet in every stitch until we get to our next chain two space. So this finishing round is just basically one single crochet in every stitch and then four single crochets in the corner. It'll just give you a nice clean finishing edge. Now regardless how many rows you did for your herringbone border, um, whether you did the eight like me or maybe you only did, you know, four or five, um, the finishing row is will make it look uh, nice and clean at the end. So I highly recommend doing this. Remember, one single crochet in every stitch and then four single crochets into the corner. It just cleans up the edge quite nicely. And when you get back to your starting point, you would just slip stitch into your first single crochet and tie off. All right, that's it. Once you've finished, this is your finished piece. Like I said, you can see the picture in, a, in the picture better. I absolutely adore it. Like I said, I think I'm going to keep it. I generally don't keep things, you know. Um, I, most of the time I donate or, I, or I've been holding over the blankets for my next uh, animal auction. But this one's kind of, you know, it's got a hold on me for some reason and green isn't even my favorite color i don't i mean i like it but uh it's just i don't know 
I love the stitch. Herringbone's one of my favorite stitches. I just, the combination of it all is just stunning. And it's, I like the way it looks the same on both sides as well. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Check me out on uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you make this, you can always show me a picture on the Facebook and Instagram. I love to see what color you choose and how you do your border and everything like that. Um, and um, I got well over a thousand crochet tutorials. You know, they're all free for you to enjoy. So check out my channel um, and hopefully you'll find something else that you want to make. Bye, everybody.